How do you make the molecular orbital diagram for the B2 plus ion? Start by writing out the highest energy atomic orbitals associated with each individual boron atom. We can see these by writing out the electron configuration for boron. And by looking at the periodic table, we can see that the electron configuration for boron is equal to 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So from this electron configuration, we can see that the highest energy atomic orbitals are associated with the n equals 2 sublevel or energy level. So we can just kind of narrow in on these um, orbitals, the 2s and the 2p orbitals, uh, for our molecular orbital diagram, because these contain the valence electrons which are involved with bonding, and that's what our molecular orbital diagram seeks to analyze. So we can kind of just ignore the um, 1s orbital and the electrons in it for the purposes of our MO diagram. So we'll just erase that. And by looking at our 2s and 2p orbitals, we can see that we have three electrons present within those uh, orbitals. So we'll go ahead and assign three electrons to each boron atom. And these three electrons are going to combine to make our B2 plus ion in the center. And so we can just erase these now. Um, and one thing we need to notice here is that we're working with an ion. We want B2 plus. And we just have two neutral um, atoms in boron on the left and the right. So one of these needs to become a cation in order to make a positive cation in the center. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but we'll just choose the one on the right for this video. We'll make that a cation. And now that means we have to take away one electron. And so now we'll only have, instead of three electrons, we're just going to have two electrons. And just clean that up here. Just going to have two electrons. And so now we have five electrons in total that are going to go into our B2 plus ion in the center um, if we just add up the three electrons and the two electrons on either side. Okay. So now we can fill in these electrons into our atomic orbitals on the left and the right. We have the 2s atomic orbitals and the 2p atomic orbitals. We have to start filling up the atomic orbitals at the bottom the lowest energy atomic orbitals first, according to the off bow principle. So we have three electrons to put in on this side. So if the 2s, this can hold two, so one, two, and then there's one more that we can add to the 2p orbitals. And then on the right, we have two electrons, and so nothing will go into the 2p orbitals, just two electrons to fill up the 2s orbitals. Okay, now we have our atomic orbitals filled in, so now we can start filling in our molecular orbitals. So to start, we again start with the lowest energy molecular orbitals, which starts with the sigma 2s bonding molecular orbital. And so these electrons will fall into that. So that can hold two electrons. And then we have two more electrons associated with these 2s atomic orbitals that will rise up to the higher energy sigma 2s star antibonding molecular orbital. Okay, so now we have this part of the MO diagram complete. And so now we can fill in our upper part associated with the p orbitals. Note that we only have one electron here. So we just have to fill in that one electron into the molecular orbital diagrams. Um, again, we start with our lowest energy molecular orbitals, which are the pi 2p molecular orbitals. And we just have one electron. There's two of them and they're at the same energy level. So just put this one electron into either of those pi 2p uh, orbitals. So I'll just put it right there. And let me just do that in black so it looks the same as everything else. And that's it. That's our completed molecular orbital diagram for B2+. So now that we have our completed molecular orbital diagram, we can start looking at some other things um, that help describe B2+. And one of these is the bond order, BO, which basically measures the stability or strength of a bond. And its formula is equal to 1 half times the number of bonding electrons, which are present in the bonding molecular orbitals, minus the number of antibonding electrons, which are present in the antibonding molecular orbitals. So how many bonding electrons do we have? A bonding molecular orbital pretty much is any molecular orbital you see in here that doesn't have a star next to it or a little asterisk. And we see that these are bonding molecular orbitals and those are bonding molecular orbitals. And if you cannot pull the electrons in any of those, we have three, one in a pi 2p bonding, molecular orbital and two in the sigma 2s. 
So we can say we have one half times three bonding electrons minus the anti-bonding electrons. Those are the ones with the stars next to them. And we see that these are empty, so we can ignore those. But the, this anti-bonding molecular orbital, the sigma 2s star, has two electrons in it. So we put a two right there. And now the bond order is going to be equal to one half times one, or 0 0.5. And we know that a bond order of one corresponds to a single bond. Likewise, a bond order of two is a double bond, and so on and so forth. So a bond order of one half or 0 0.5 pretty much has about half the strength of a um, single bond. So we know that the bond with B2 plus is a little weaker than in a single bond. Finally, is B2 plus paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? We know that because we have an unpaired electron present up here in the pi 2p molecular orbital, this means that B2 plus is paramagnetic. And what this means is that B2 plus will be weakly attracted to an external magnetic field.